the start of Unit 9. And with Unit 9, we're continuing with our first uh, lecture for every unit being an art historical lecture. And this one is going to be the story of sort of the beginning of modernism from, uh, from the end of Romanticism, the beginnings of realism, into kind of the middle period of modernism. And we will be getting to high modernism in the next lecture. And in this lecture, um, there are a couple of things I want to say. First thing I want to say is, let's just kind of look at some of what we're going to be seeing, is that a lot of the art that we're going to be seeing, especially at the beginning, is art that's not necessarily going to look particularly modern to you guys, that um, it's going to seem a little bit odd that that's how we are classifying this. But remember that um, it has less, in some ways, less to do with look or like which color palette um, was being used, and it has more to do with um, the ideas that were being communicated. In some ways, modernism is similar to uh, romanticism in that way, that there's a great deal of variety in the looks of the work, but it's more about some of the underpinning ideas. And, and then the other thing I want you to get a sense of is how much distance we cover in this short period of time, uh, that we go all the way to there. I think that's the last slide, right? go all the way there, but we start here. And that as people were living this, this seemed like a perfectly reasonable um, series of transitions. So um, that's a kind of a, another interesting thing about uh, the development of modernism. And then the last thing I want to say before we get started is just um, a little bit about some of the underpinnings of modernism in terms of its ideas about the artist and its ideas about the role of, of art in society. Um, modernism, all versions of modernism share one of the, share a couple of underpinning ideas and one of them is a, kind of a belief in progress, both in historical or uh, technological progress, but also a belief in aesthetic progress, the idea that artists are moving in a path towards some sort of development and progress and that so that you know that the art of the 20th century will be grander than the art of the 18th or the 17th century um, and with this idea of progress was also this idea that the artist was often at the forefront of this so just like the romanticists had this idea of the artist being in opposition to society um, the, um, the modernists had more of an idea of the artist being sort of like at the vanguard, at the front tip of the spear, so to speak, of society. And that uh, literally the, the artist was often kind of like living in the future, that the, the values, the aesthetics of the artist was a step ahead of, of society. Um, and the other thing I would say that's really important about um, all of modernism is this interest in essentialism and in truth. Uh, we see it at the beginning in the in modernism's obsession with realism of like really kind of depicting things as they really are. As Courbet famously said, "If if you show me an angel, I will paint it." Right. Um, but eventually, that becomes more an interest in pictorial truth, like the truth of how we actually see, and then and the truth about color, and then eventually it becomes an interest in the truth about art itself, the truth that painting is really just paint on a surface, the truth that all attempts to create um, the illusion of, of you know, form and light is just that, just an illusion. Uh, so all of that is tied together with this idea of essentialism, like this pursuit of trying to figure out what thing is truly essential to an art medium or to a particular work of art, um, and this um, interest in, in truthfulness and honesty. Okay, so we're going to move into the story. So we're going to start with Courbet, and I picked this image in part, um, the self-portrait right here, the desperate man, um, to represent, to, just to make sure that you're aware that just because we're moving into a modernist period, just because we are talking about realism, that um, romantic spirit is not dead, right? Um, the romantic, in, the influence of the romantic ideas are still alive today, and we can definitely see its influence on artists of this time. We can see it on Courbet. Um, but here are some more famous works by Courbet, such as uh, The Burial at Ornans, and you can see his 
some of the things about Courbet's point of view about realism. And I, I want to be clear, like when we're talking about like this painting, it is the name of the movement is realism, but it is still in some ways a, pictor a pictorial style. Uh, it isn't in some ways any more realistic than the paintings of the 18th century um, or the 17th century. But it's um it's about being realistic primarily from a social point of view, you know, willingness to depict everyday people and to predict predict or to depict them as they actually are. Here we have also a famous painting, his allegory about his life in painting, um, titled Painter Studio, but the full title is much longer. And um, and then Fantin Latour. Fantin Latour is one of my um, favorite painters, and I just um, I love some of the paintings I'm going to be showing you right here. And I think um, Fantin Latour is kind of an interesting figure because he sits in between some worlds, right? He's uh, he was definitely part of the group that um, that loved and admired Manet, um, this circle of young artists who just kind of were kind of all tightly organized around Manet. Uh, and we'll talk about Manet in a little bit, but Latour was also more conservative than Manet, and both in that some of his some of his aesthetic decisions seem maybe a little bit more like uh, a Courbet, but even in some ways more um, uh, a little bit more conservative than that. But nonetheless, a really gorgeous, beautiful painter. Um, Those of you who watch this on the YouTube channel might recognize that head um, as the icon I use for for the ASW Art Appreciation uh, Channel. I think this painting here, the Portrait of Sonia, uh, just might be one of the most beautiful paintings ever painted. It's just so beautiful. We'll talk a little bit more about um, some of these works um, on the lecture, the Art Impulse lecture at the end of this unit, when I'm talking about the uh, Intimist Impulse. So Manet was extremely influential on uh, some of these artists who were, you know, had been inspired by Courbet and were uh, continuing to be, you know, interested in making sort of modern, what they saw as modern, like of the day artwork. And but Manet, in some ways, was more um, more avant garde, more aggressive than many of the young men who followed him. And he. Um, he was very willing to take risks. And and with his painting, he really kind of um, really kind of pushed the idea that uh, painting was about shapes, right, and about marks and shapes. And and to a certain degree, this is not like a totally um, unheard of point of view. In some ways, Delacroix was a champion of the same idea uh, in di a different way. Obviously, Delacroix had more layering and more transparency, um, but Manet definitely was interested in, in just an organization of painting as an organization of paint on a surface that he was um, quite willing to let paint be flat. Um, but uh, also he, especially in his landscapes, he was very loose and with his brush handling. And I think that became very influential on later artists who eventually started to be called uh, the Impressionists. And Manet was included in that group, although you know at the time no one was calling anyone Impressionists. And if you remember, we talked about this painting at the very start of the course and talked about uh, some of the meaning in there, but also some of uh, uh, some of the mystery to this painting. Uh, oop. That's my one minute warning, my one minute warning. And I guess I don't have that much more I want to say since we already discussed this once, but I just want to point out, you know, like that one of the things that we see in this whole group is kind of an interest in um, people of lower social classes. Um, all right, uh, we'll get back to this after the break.